what's the good word, y'all? DKB here. So the New York Jets have selected their seven players from the 2023 NFL Draft. And I've covered scouting breakdowns for two of them. Will McDonald, the fourth, the edge prospect um, from our first round selection previously. And I've also broken down our center, Joe Tipman, out of the second round. Today, we're covering our fourth round pick, tackle Carter Warren out of Pittsburgh. Just to understand what kind of prospect we're getting. How likely is it he's going to start right out of the gates in year one? And kind of what's the uh, long-term upside and different things of that nature for him? So let's get into some of the highlights about our fourth round pick here. So we know that we've needed a tackle as either starting capable or as insurance um, in the event that we feel we are comfortable with Makai Becton, Dwayne Brown, and Max Mitchell, which appears to be the case, whether that be how the board has fallen or whether that just being uh, the the New York Jets having many other players higher up um, and, and, you know, that kind of being the precedence for how our draft picks went. Nonetheless, Carter Warren, he's age 25, so you're talking about a guy that's essentially in that, that Michael Clemens role. He's already kind of matured and done what he's going to do uh, as a prospect to some degree. Um He's effectively really started the majority of his playing time at left tackle with Pittsburgh. Now, they have done some weird things where they liked kind of some odd alignment. So you'll see him as the um, sixth offensive lineman effectively on the right side in some of the, uh, the, the plays and series that they've done. But for the most part, we need to look at him as a left tackle. Um, we know that he's torn his meniscus in the press conference. Joe Douglas said that he is fully recovered from that. So we can expect him in many camps um, and OTAs and, you know, for there ideally not to be any setbacks with that injury, which is also a primary reason why he's kind of lasted to the fourth round, even though he was a little bit more of an unknown prospect uh, to many of us. Um, trained with offensive line guru Duke Manyweather, so that says a lot of what I need to know right there. Duke has done a fantastic job of being able to get the best out of a lot of offensive linemen if they legitimately have any ability to start in the NFL. So we should be looking at him as a guy that's having a solid base after working with Duke Manyweather, but also what he's been able to do at Pittsburgh, who, by the way, operates a zone running scheme as well. So it's it's a bit of a, 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 a consistent transition for a guy like Carter Warren here, which is going to be, um, or excuse me, War, uh, yeah, Carter Warren. Um, so what are some of the strengths? I kind of want to dive into the stats first, because when I went and really checked out, you know, what it is that should have stand, it stood out about him as a guy that I've seen kind of projected as maybe a late day two starter, definitely early day three in the worst case. Um, it's pretty interesting. He's definitely not in that tier of, you know, the big four guys that we've seen. 39 career starts, again, at left tackle. 74 hurries, though, seven quarterback hits, nine sacks, and 11 penalties with eight of those effectively being false starts uh, as part of his resume. So he's kind of been a guy that has progressed in leaps and bounds uh, over the course of his tenure there at Pittsburgh. Um, but he's definitely had some rough times. But I actually kind of like that characteristic about this particular guy that you've seen struggles early um, and often actually for the most part, his rookie year actually being one of the worst for him. Uh, but he was able to stick and grind it out. And you, you see a guy now that looks like he's immediately going to be a, a backup swing tackle uh, and be able to potentially contribute right away on this offensive line from what I've been able to check out. So some of the strengths, elite arm length, 35 and 3 8 inch arms. To give you guys a comparison, everybody went crazy about Dewan Jones and his legendary wingspan um, and, you know, breaking records for the senior bowl. Dewan Jones has 36 and 3 8 inch arms. So we're only talking, you know, literally an inch smaller in terms of arm length uh, and wingspan here. So he uses that very, very effectively, disrupts uh, rushers both in the past uh, and utilizes in a run game. But in the past, disrupts rushers with timed punches. Uh, he tries to make sure he can get first contact after he establishes his feet. He's good with defenders uh, when you're talking about guys that are coming from wider alignments. Think our defense perfectly as those guys, uh, you know, Robert Sala loves to make some of our edge guys uh, uh, line up in that wide nine set. 
he's uh, very experienced in, in, uh, in uh, being able to disrupt and kind of nullify those guys. Um, solid anchor through contact, so he's not a guy that really just gets bullied and pushed around a lot. You're talking about him being able to have a decent level understanding. This is a work in progress for him, but he comes in adequately enough being able to understand dual reads, pick up stunts, being able to effectively hand off his guys, uh, you know, to the right of him uh, to make sure that there's no, um, you know, leaks in coverage there. He's a good run defender. Again, uses that length. He kind of walls off his defenders, is able to go out there and keep them engaged until the whistle blows, um, which is something that's huge for us because, again, uh, you know, in a, in a zone run based scheme, especially ours, we're not looking to go mano a mano here. We're looking to actually get to our positions and get those lanes created for our running backs, um, which is quite a different skill set here. But he fits the mold, mirrors opponents that want to attack the inside and try to get to the quarterback quicker, which forces them to go outside, which feeds into his natural ability with that arm length and being able to go out there and kind of stunt people. Um, and just again, excellent time punches. That's something that, you know, can't be talked about enough with him uh, and his pass protection set. So right now, and yeah, I kind of seen this go a little bit back and forth, but he seems like he's going to be a much better pass blocker than run blocker right out of the gate for us. So a lot of um, uh, a lot of things to be optimistic about, a lot of things that sound really good about him. Some of the opportunities that he's going to need to hone and work on and develop, right? We're talking about stiff lower body movement. So he's not a guy that does very well in having to um, um, reset, shift his feet, being able to redirect. He, he does that very slowly. So he's a guy that can get beat on counter moves. Doesn't happen often, but in the NFL, you know, the, the skill set he's going to be facing bumps up a little bit more. So you can see that being a bigger problem for him at this level. Um, some other things would be he can be beat with stutter steps and a couple of hezzies, right? Um, so if defender wants to set him up, if they're kind of stacking moves, playing the long game with chess, <laughs> um, then it, that is a, a little bit of a cause for concern in his game. His lower body footwork can be a little bit slow. Um, that's going to hinder his ability to do things like redirect. It's also caused some holding issues over the course of his career, which feeds back into those penalties that we saw. Um, and then he can lose his pad level when he's trying to pull or move in space. So this impacts him a lot more in the run game. Uh, obviously, you're not really looking to pull, uh, you know, do pull blocks and things like that uh, in the pass block sets. But this is one of the direct reasons why he seems like he's going to be a much more effective pass blocker early on in his career. Um, contact balance can need, use some improvement. We talked about how well his anchor is, but he still can't be bullied. Guys are going to be a lot stronger here. Could potentially, again, as a 25-year-old, be tapped out uh, in terms of his physical ability. But there is going to be um, some measure of him getting stronger, right, uh, at the NFL level with their program, with the nutrition uh, that they're going to uh, hook him up with, uh, and all of that good stuff. Um, he needs work effectively attacking the second level. So this gets purely into his run-blocking ability. This is one of the few guys we broke down probably the top four or five tackles in the NFL draft, right? Because we thought we were going to hit that very early. All of those guys had the mental label of being a mauler. This guy doesn't really have that in his DNA, right? He goes out there and he does his job, but you're not seeing him drill defenders into the ground. So we'll see if we try to impart that into him or if that's just a, um, a facet of his game where maybe he's a little bit more of a finesse player. He just goes out there and gets the job done. Um, that's to be seen, but we do want to work on his ability to go out there and find his uh, defender at the second level and be able to, you know, drill them into the dirt or stonewall them because he should have the advantage over some of these linebackers and safeties with them getting smaller. Um, doesn't consistently keep his foot, feet moving either, so those can be, uh, it, it can open him up, keep him exposed um, to defenders that while maybe he wins the first initial push, um, those second efforts can kind of get him into some problems there. Adequate, but uh, he needs to work on resetting his hands effectively. Sometimes he just looks to lock right back on to where he was at. That also fed into a lot of his holding concerns. Um, and then there was a big call out, and uh, I'm glad I was able to kind of catch this. He needs to work on his stances, right? When you talk about defenders that study game tape and different things like that, they look for anything that's consistent enough that they can win um, 
uh, that they can use to their advantage, right? Carter Warren has a, a issue where he stands a little bit taller on some of his pass blocker sets, um, which can be a direct giveaway to are we doing a run play, are we doing a pass play, is this play action, uh, etc. So that's something he's going to want to work on disguising a little bit better just to, you know, um, keep the cards close to the chest, as they say, for the offense. Um, and then lastly, the pro comparison that I've seen um, that seems to be effective for him is Joe Noteboom. Um, so take that and run with it as you will. But that is our fourth round tackle, a guy that looks to be a swing tackle early on in his career. We'll see if he even necessarily needs to be a starter, uh, but it'll be interesting because you're talking about Dwayne Brown that's only been a left starter, uh, a left tackle. You're talking about Carter Warren that's coming in, effectively only been a left tackle, but he's had snaps on the right side of the offensive line. So um, I don't see us cutting Dwayne Brown, which means maybe we end up ultimately seeing Carter Warren here get relegated to the practice squad in year one. And uh, we call him up as needed with, you know, injuries um, or just as he progresses, maybe quicker than expected. So, uh Either way, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. I'm still very excited, very hyped about this guy, but definitely seems like it's uh, more of a project player uh, and long-term insurance than a guy that's going to help out right, right away. So, uh, again, let me know your thoughts, and I'll catch you guys again. Peace.